for a lot of years, Capture One's main advantage over Lightroom has been its color. Well, that's kind of changed with the new point color in Lightroom. And today I'm going to show you the more advanced tips for how to use it and just how good it really is. Yeah, we're also going to look at Capture One, but which one comes out on top? This is actually kind of a big deal because with Capture One costing more and in almost every category giving less than Lightroom, I've seen more people than ever switching back to Lightroom. Despite the diehards that say Capture One processes RAWs better, it does Fuji files better, it has all of these things, most of those have been proven to be little more than myth on this channel, let's give credit where credit is due. Capture One definitely had a better color editor. Let's go and do something like Portra 400 on this from Filmist. Okay, so we have this nice portrait look. Now let's go to the colors and I want you to see what it just did. If we go into color, we go to advanced color and you see we have all these custom color profiles. Capture One also has a basic color editor, much like Lightroom. In Capture One, you can see we have all these custom colors. And of course, you can add those to layers as well. So let's say I want to work with the swimsuit. I'm actually going to put it on another layer. So I'm going to make an empty adjustment layer here on top. Then I'm going to click the brush and I'm going to brush in. We know Lightroom's way ahead in AI masks and things like that, but Capture Capture One's had a fairly good layer system for some time. So now here we are and I can do a advanced color. I'm going to click the little dropper here and I'm just going to select the color I want on the red swimsuit. Now I can start moving this around and you can see down here we have the input and the output. And what we have is this HSL color wheel. So around the color wheel is the hue. If we turn on view select color range, you can see we can move around and define this. So towards the inside here is low saturation. And as we move up, it limits this to only the higher saturated things. And you can see how it starts to eliminate affecting the skin tones. And we can do these adjustments. So this has been a really great color editor. Now, it's not quite three dimensional because there's not really a direct direct luminance value selector in this. I'll show you what I mean in a minute when we get to Lightroom. Let's make the swimsuit more orange. Let's make it more red, more pink, and we can play around with these colors and it actually works really well. If you're just doing a quick edit, this may seem like a small thing, but the ability to edit nuanced colors within layers as well is a huge deal. Something else that Lightroom has lacked for a long time. While the AI masks are miles ahead of Capture One, there have been limited color control tools within those masks. That's all changed now. And since this is actually a Lightroom video today, not a Capture One video, let's go into Lightroom. I have the same photo and it's also edited with Portra 400 from Filmist. And if you look here, most of those colors come from advanced curves and from the normal color mixer, which is very good in Lightroom. But what this does is it kind of affects all the reds, all the oranges, doesn't really let you define, hey, I want to go more for this skin tone than for that orange in the background. Now, some people will say, hey, Capture One also has the skin tone editor. And yes, that's true. But in reality, the skin tone editor is more like an extension of the advanced color editor, just in another panel. And while it does have some little adjustments and tools, anything you can really do in the skin tone editor, you can do with HSL sliders in advanced color. But here's where it gets magical now is we have the point color in Lightroom. Much like Capture One, we can now take an eyedropper and select the color of our swimsuit. But Lightroom didn't actually copy Capture One in this. It is, of course, an HSL system, and we can expand here and have even more settings, which we'll look at here. The dot here is our selected color. You see it reflected here. And now if I move the circle around, you can see it's also moving the sliders around. And if I move this circle around, it's adjusting the luminance. So we're saying here's our selected point, and then here's how we're going to move those values around. You can do those this way visually on the color palette, or you can use the sliders. You can control the range of that this way. So it's showing you a visualization of more or less how feathered it is. If you go to Capture One, we see we have a very similar thing in the smoothness. Although while the HSL wheel is really good in Capture One, it can get kind of finicky and annoying always doing this. Lightroom has given us this really big visual kind of canvas to do the color in. And of course, we can turn on Visualize Range, which turns everything to grayscale except what we've selected. Let's double click these and reset them. So we have our selected color. You can see how it's kind of bleeding over into skin tones, the lips, things like that. But wait, 
Let's say we just want to affect the swimsuit. We can do this in a layer. So let's go ahead and delete this. Unfortunately, there's no way to switch this setting to a layer mode. So let's do this in masks and edit it like I normally would edit this. If we go to masks, you see we can manually add things here, which we're going to do in just a second. But in a normal course of editing, I would add a speed mask. So I'm going to go over to the Elegance Speed Mask Develop presets and just add a quick combo mask. So we've run a mask because we have some kind of harsh sunlight. You can see here that we built up all these masks from the speed mask preset, but now let's see what we can do with color. Let's create a new mask, and I'm not going to do AI or speed masks or anything fancy with this one. I'm just going to do a brush mask, and I'm going to paint in not having to be real specific around the swimsuit. Why do we not have to be specific? Because we now have the point color three-dimensional HSL tool within the masks. You can see within the mask panel, I have this same tool, and I can click the eyedropper, and I'm going to select the same thing, and we have all the same controls. Let's go to visualize range and now we can see what it affects so we can adjust the intensity of that range to see how much it covers you can see that the entire effect including visualized range is only affecting where we painted this mask in now we can refine this though with three degrees of adjustment so one is the hue range right that's around the circle we see it moving left to right or in capture one we are moving around the circle so we can refine how the hue is. This is the same thing we did with the eyedropper. We're just adjusting a little bit to put it what we want. We can control the handles here to control how the range feathers off. And of course, we can adjust the width of it. So it's doing all of this here and then showing you kind of a preview of what it affects. Then is the saturation range. Again, this is something we could do in Capture One as well by pushing the triangle in or out. You can see if we pull down, it's drawing it further down. If we pull up, it's leaving it only to the saturated range. And we have the handles to adjust, to move. And we can tell it, hey, this is the element of that that I want to affect. Now we're gonna stay pretty saturated because this swimsuit is pretty saturated. That's the range we're gonna focus on so we don't affect skin tones and things like that. Then we have the luminous range. This limits it by how light or dark those red colors are, which is a new dimension to how the wheel works in Capture One. And this is actually very powerful and we can control again the feather off and the light and darkness. Notice how if I expand this out, it drops down and it covers the darker shadowy areas of that red swimsuit, but it doesn't extend into the skin tones here. It gives us kind of a third dimension to feather out and control that while leaving alone our saturation and our hue selection range that we would normally use in Capture One. Now that we have all this selected, we can turn off the visualize range and we can either use the sliders here or we can manually grab the little white circles and we can move this wherever we want we could say hey let's go more pink with this let's turn the saturation up or down a little bit let's adjust the luminance let's make it a dark pink color like this kind of a rosy color and so now all of this is within a mask right it's right up here with our masks and we can turn it on and off you can see how cleanly we're changing the color of the swimsuit without it bleeding over why because we have these three layers of control with the hue the saturation and the luminance value that lets us push it around. The Capture One panel is good, but this is actually, I think, more intuitive. You see where you can move, you see what point color you selected, you have all these range tools, and you can move it around. And of course, right here, much like Capture One, you see the color you have selected and the output color that you have converted that to, and you have these different ways to manipulate. Now, I've been a critic of Adobe for years because for years they were charging us for Lightroom and there wasn't a lot of updates. And the past few years, that's changed a lot. And Capture One has been struggling to keep up, but at the same time, essentially throwing away their perpetual license subscription in any practical way. That's something we talked about in other videos. It's more expensive and the features are falling behind. Now, we'll see what Capture One brings in 2024 and I'm going to keep testing. I use both. I make presets for Lightroom. I make styles for Capture One. I'm always in both worlds and competition is good, is good whether it's from Luminar, from Capture One, from Adobe. We need all this competition and that's why I'm going to keep looking at these different apps and challenging them to keep improving. If I was to say right now which advanced color editor is better, Lightroom or Capture One, for years it would have had to be Capture One hands down. I think, and it's pretty new, I'm just digging into it, I think this is actually a better advanced color editor than Capture One. And like I mentioned in the video last week, this is a major nail in the coffin for Capture One because it was one of the few things that they still had that was well ahead 
of Adobe Lightroom. I hope you guys found this useful. We'll see where it goes. Leave your comments, what you think. Maybe you think I'm a fanboy. I'm not actually, I'm not married to Adobe. I want competition. I want them all improving and I want them listening to us. Both of these tools will allow you to edit advanced color really, really well. The Lightroom one, I think, is a little more intuitive. That third dimension of the luminous value of your color selection is actually really powerful and intuitive in Lightroom. It's great for us shadow hackers that understand the nuances of finding that shadow and the color and the hue and the tonality of it. Something we'll talk about more in my free shadow hackers workshops. If you've never been, don't miss it. I'll put a link in the comments as well as to the other presets and other things on my site, including some of my free film presets. All right, you guys, we'll see you next time. Take care.